Hello and welcome to the Mutual Fund Show. My name is Neeta Chal. The next 25 minutes we'll talk all about mutual funds. It's the first mutual fund show of the new year. And it's important to, as important as it is to talk about what principles are about investing in mutual fund investing. And we've done all of that in the month gone by. It's also important to try and talk about the here and now and what's happening in the current scenario, which might have a bearing on your decision making about investing in funds. Now, something that's uh, clearly happened in the last couple of months or last three months is that your relationship manager in a bank or uh, somebody who advises you might have told you with all the good intent maybe that uh, insurance products are coming up in a big way and in a competitive way versus mutual fund investments and they might give you a better bang for your buck. Now, it may well be true, but the question is, should you know about both sides before trying to make that decision. I think you should, and that's what we'll try to do today with Vijay Mantri, Chief Investment Strategist at JRL Money. He joins us right now on the show. Vijay, good having you. Thanks much for joining in. Um, the last, Happy New Year, of course. Uh, to Happy New Year to all your viewers as well. Thank you so much, Vijay. The last uh, two or three months, maybe for a long time, but especially in the last two or three months, we've, I've heard personally of many instances wherein uh, people have opted for an insurance product from a savings perspective and not an insurance perspective over a mutual fund product. Now, maybe nothing's wrong in that. What I, what I urge you to do today is try and give us a sense of the kind of returns that come in in both the products and whether the hot selling insurance products have an alternative in the mutual fund, a mutual fund family as well or not. Sure, I'll do that. Uh, uh it is very important to understand uh, from where the return of either mutual fund or insurance company and for that matter any financial product comes from. Essentially returns come from the capital market so it could be a fixed income product, it could be a equity product, it could be combination of both this product and return get generated from that market. Both insurance company and mutual fund companies are a, a intermediaries through which you participate in the market. So there's no way in the world where one could say that insurance products are much safer than mutual fund product. Actually, it is not possible to have that kind of argument at all. Mm -hmm. But currently what is happening is that there's anxiety in the people's mind because the property market is not doing too well. Uh, equities have thrown their own challenges. And the last uh, refuse in a form of debt mutual fund had its own sets of challenges. So I think this is a window which perhaps the insurance industry was waiting for too long. So they just pushed their product saying that we give you guarantee, we give you a surety of the capital, and we are far better solution compared to mutual fund product. Are you, are you saying that those guaranteed returns are untrue, or that they will not be able to meet? No, they, they would be able to meet because they have to give guarantee to IR, IRDA. So they have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, when they, somebody gives the guarantee in the insurance product, they have to commit to it and they have to do it because once you give guarantee, you have to provide certain sort of capital and there are all kind of things one need to do. But one need to understand inherently from where the guarantee comes from. Okay. The guarantee comes from inherent strength of the product. Hmm. So suppose I am giving you guarantee, it means I am underlying securities cannot be equities. Sure. It has to be a fixed income and it has to be highest rated fixed income product. Okay. So what insurance company would do in these kind of product is have to have a, a government securities product. Hmm. Now suppose you have a government securities. No, so, sorry, just before we get there, uh, Vijay, just wondering. So when we talk about insurance companies, typically all through the last few years, uh, there have been two kinds of insurance products which have uh, been at the forefront when it comes to uh, savings related product. One is ULIPS and one is retirement solutions of sorts, which a lot of insurance companies give out. Are we essentially talking about these two categories right now? Yeah, uh, ULIP is very different than retirement. Of products. course. In ULIP, ULIP is just like mutual fund as far as functionality of is concerned because ULIP, nobody give you any assurance. Hmm. Uh, so ULIP have various plans. You have a liquid plan, you have a debt plan, you have a balance plan, hybrid plan like balance fund, and you have uh, equity, mid cap, large cap, all kind of permutation combination which are possible in mutual fund products are possible in insurance. So whatever is underlying portfolio does in mutual fund or in ULIP, you will get the similar kind of return. So from a functionality, pers functionality perspective, actually there's no difference between ULIP and insurance product. However, what are the advantage in mutual fund compared to ULIP is that one, in ULIP you have to commit for the long term. 
Hmm. So suppose you are buying a ULIP product, you need to buy for a minimum period of five years. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are some product which are single premium product, but uh, we are talking about a normal product which is a minimum five tranches you need to put money. Hmm. You can't after putting two tranches you can't say I'm no, I'm not going to put three tranches. You have to commit to five tranches. Second thing you can't take this money out. If you take this money out, there are penalties and all kind of things available. Third is suppose there's underperformance. There's nothing you can do about it. So uh, the only thing people are selling currently is that in ULIP you get tax benefit hmm. because ULIP returns are tax free return. But in ULIP one need to have at least 10 time insurance cover. So ULIP product could be appealing theoretically to somebody who is below 30. But the moment you are 35, 40, 45 year plus then the mortality charges itself start inching up. So there is no difference between the ULIP and uh, uh, mutual fund products, um, suppose somebody at 50 years of age and buying this product. Okay. So, so uh, that's ULIPs. Now, that's retirement ULIP. solutions. Retirement. And I would urge you, sorry Vijay, I would urge you to try and compare the retirement solutions and the kind of returns they give versus products in the mutual fund industry and the kind of returns that they might. Comparable products in the mutual fund industry and the kind of returns that they give. I think we have a table which shows that. I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll discuss about but uh, before that, uh, I would like to explain that in most of the insurance communication, I am not saying it is done by insurance company, but the ground force which is selling the mutual fund product. The insurance product. Generally they don't communicate, there is there's very rarely any standardization of communication as far as return is concerned. Hmm. So you have, we have seen pe people uh, saying that you invest 1 lakh rupees right now uh, for a 10 year or you invest 1 lakh rupees right now and from uh, 12th year or 13th year, we are going to give you 20,000 rupees. They're saying it's 20% CAGR, which is absolutely rubbish. So there's no standardization of communication as far as there may be at IID level, but it is unfortunately is not uh, implemented properly. So there's a, there's one part of it. So and many customers don't understand the integrity of CAGR, IRR, and simple return and all kind of thing. But what essentially is selling like hot cake currently is a simplified product where somebody say invest certain amount for a certain period of time and after that time pe period get over you are going to get certain amount fixed for next till your life hmm. and then you're going to get certain lump sum when somebody die when the person who's insured dies so there's a one kind of product available so yeah. that is a regular income product available then within that there's one more product available where again you commit certain amount for a certain period of time then you get one half time or two time of that uh, annual premium in form of uh, income uh, for 10 year, 12 year, depending on how long you paid. We looked at all these numbers and the returns are at least one half percent inferior to a normal mutual fund product. Mm -hmm. One half percent inferior over a 24 year period is a hell lot of money. Sure, so can I'll you take us to the numbers? Through this yes. chart. Suppose you look at this chart. There's a, a very simple product where insurance company is asking you to pay 60,000 rupees per month for 15 years. Hmm. And then you are, you are going to get 85,000 rupees per month till your death. And then you get 13 lakh rupees, dependent get 13 lakh rupees. Uh, and these are kind of SMSs and emailers you get from various uh, people. So I did an IRR and I looked at various combination. Suppose somebody is starting at the age of 25, put 60,000 rupees per month for next 15 years. 15 years. 15 years, so okay. that is a, this product. So at the age of 40, is committing till the age of 40. From the age of 40, start getting 85,000 rupees per month hmm. till he dies and I took a number, suppose he dies at the age of 80. Hmm. And then at the age of age, his dependent is going to get 12.97 lakh. The IRR of that product is 5.6%. That is the best possible combination. You are investing for 15 years and then you are taking money out for 40 years. The moment you break this cycle, the same person instead of dying at 80, suppose die at 75, the IRR come down to 5.4% and the same person dies at the age of 60, then IRR come down to 4% and the same person dies at the age of 50, the IRR is just 0.5% annualized return. You can look at other way around, suppose instead of starting at 25 years of age, somebody start at 40 years of age, the best possible scenario is 4.7% return, which is little about saving rate. 
you get. So this is the kind of communication, very clever, cleverly uh, feeding on the anxiety of investor. And the insurance products are not where you can give money once or twice. It is a pretty long-term commitment. Yeah. So once you commit the money and there's a surrender value, there's a prepayment charges, that there are various penalties of discontinuation or not fulfilling a promise. So when you get stuck with that, then you had it. Yeah, sure. And the sales force is so motivated in insurance industries. So even it, even today, on many product, the first year commission is as high as 25 to 40 percent. So the sales team who's selling this is hugely motivated that once I sold this product to my customer, this is what I'm going to earn immediately, yeah. and the customer need to pay for next 15 years or 10 years or 12 years. Okay. Now I would want to illust give some illustrations of those examples as well, but just before that. What's, what about the alternative? We spoke about insurance and the kind of returns that come in here. What about the alternative in mutual funds? I'm guessing GSECs are the alternatives. What's the typical kind of return that you get in a mutual fund uh, product which invests in GSECs? So I'll, I'll give you some illustration. First, let's look at the history. Hmm. Okay. It is very important to look at the history, then we, look at, we are going to look at future. So if you look at last 20 year history of uh, insurance product and uh, ULIP is the recent innovation, maybe five year, 10 year kind of thing. But 20 year people used to buy traditional endowment kind of product. And if you look at IRR of these product, it is five and a half percent. Maybe a Five point six percent, five point five point seven percent. I'm talking about when the interest rate in the economy was 15 percent, sure. 12 percent, 13 percent kind of thing. We are not talking about economy where the interest rate is six and a half percent. So even during that era, the return has been just five and a half percent to six percent maximum. In some product, they are seven percent IRR, but by and large, it is five and a half percent kind of return. Now look at the data for the mutual fund industry, and I'll give you some magical number. On 30th November 2009, hmm. GSEC yield, 10 year GSEC yield was 7.52%. So if anybody who's invested at 7.52%, for next 10 year got 7.5%, assume he's able to interest, uh, re reinvest at the same interest rate, the six monthly coupon. Now if you look at from 2009 November till 2019 November and 10 year period, Average GSEC return in the mutual fund industry, even after paying anything between one to one and a half percent expenses, is 8.37 percent CAGR. 7.52 percent was a 10-year GSEC yield 10 year back. The mutual fund industry, let's assume one percent expenses. So 6.5 percent, you knock off one percent, straight away six and a half percent. But mutual fund industries delivered two percent CAGR over and above that even in just last 10 years. Okay. If you look at 20 year data, 1999 GSEC yield was like 14%, 15%, 12%. Okay, okay so we established that. So the if GSEC you look at, hmm. on an average mutual fund has delivered, suppose insurance deliver 5.5% to 6%, mutual fund industries deliver close to 8.5% to 9% return historically. Okay. So 2 to 3% superior performance. Okay. By actively managing the portfolio on the fixed income side. Okay, what about what could happen now? I mean, uh, I want to bring up some of those examples uh, wherein uh, the kind of products that are typically being sold in the insurance space, and if you believe that there are more beneficial products from the return-wise and from the flexibility-wise in the mutual fund industry as well. Yeah, so uh, what is being sold currently is selling like a hot cake is that you pay a fixed amount, say a lakh rupees per annum, mm. for say 12 years. Mm -hmm. And from 13th year, you're going to get say 1,75,000 to 2 lakh rupees per annum mm. kind of number for next uh, 12 years. So it is a 24-year product. The IRR on these products comes to close to 5.5%, mm. 5.5% to 5.6%. So I looked at where the insurance companies are going to invest these uh, sum of money. Mm. So they are going to invest in GSEC fund. Mm -hmm. uh, or GSEC, sorry, not GSEC fund, but GSEC. Mm -hmm. So if I have to look at 24, 25 years from now, mm -hmm. I need to look at 2044 maturity GSEC paper. Mm -hmm. So 20,000, 20, uh, 2044 years maturity GSEC current yield is around 7.45 to 7.5%. Mm -hmm. You take out, suppose a fund running that have a 50, 50 to 55 basis point expenses. Mm -hmm. So you have 6.9% CAGR, and I assume that let's suppose interest in the economy remains the same. So what happens in that kind of product? So 
suppose you invest one lakh. We took a couple of illustrations. Suppose you invest one lakh rupees for twelve years, and you withdraw one lakh for next twelve years. So you are investing twelve lakh rupees. You are withdrawing twelve lakh rupees from thirteenth year to twenty fourth year. But even after doing that, the remaining corpus at the end of twenty fourth year is twenty two lakh rupees. Hmm. So you invested twelve lakh rupees. You took out twelve lakh rupees, but the corpus is. 22 lakh rupees so there's a better alternate available in mutual fund industry in insurance irr is 5.5% in mutual fund industry even in gsec fund the irr is 7.9% net of expenses so that is a kind of options available in the mutual fund industry with similar kind of security because it is just just government of india securities okay there is also uh, somewhere in i mean you know other examples wherein you invest a lump sum right now and then withdraw a certain sum at some point of time in the future does the return of such kind of product within the insurance space uh, is there an alternative in the mutual fund space as well yeah, are there alternatives yeah absolutely there? suppose you look at the guaranteed product in the insurance industry so let's assume that you have a fixed one time investment yes. you know, i just took a number hmm. now suppose you invest 12 lakh rupees we took the illustration of uh 1 lakh investing for 12 years suppose sure. you take 12 lakh rupees hmm. you invested 12 lakh rupees hmm. at in the beginning right now for instance on the 1st january invested 12 lakh rupees you can withdraw 1 lakh rupees per annum from 12th year onwards mm-hmm. so you withdraw uh for next 12 month 12 years so you invested 12 lakh you withdrawn 12 lakh rupees but at the end of 2044 around 24 25 years from now mm. the corpus is around 40 lakh rupees an irr of 6.9% so if you invest one time in the gsec product which is maturing in 2044 there's option available in the mutual fund industry right now okay so that option is also there and the returns are superior for over 1/2% as you 1% percent alone 1% over a 24 year period on one end we are discuss we are debating about managed fund or in passive fund but the huge industry uh, on insurance side where the customer doesn't even understand return Okay, so these are the normal GSEC schemes on which the returns. There is also a third one wherein somebody invests, uh, say, a lump sum right now and withdraws a much higher sum after 12 years as well. But even in those instances, the returns so, are favorable. Suppose somebody invests 12 lakh rupees right now. Uh, after 12th year, the person can start withdrawing 2 lakh rupees per annum for next 20, next 12 next years. Next 12 so, years. So you invest at 12 lakh rupees, you allow that money to grow for 12 years. and from 13th years onward you start taking 2 lakh rupees per annum so you invest at mm-hmm. 12 lakh you took out 24 lakh rupees mm-hmm. but even after doing that the corpus available at the end of 24th year is close to 20 lakh rupees again 6.9% irr okay so very honestly if you are looking at investment i don't think insurance is the way okay but okay so that, okay and i'm i'm sure um, that the return numbers look pretty convincing the question is vijay um that would it, would there be a very limited number of schemes available which give such returns and are there different alternates out here because frankly i mean gsec f- funds for example are funds with not necessarily very long period let's say for example somebody wants to invest in a fund which doesn't have a maturity in 4 5 7 8 years 10 years but has a slightly longer term option available what are the different slabs available and what are the kind of returns there are so the mutual fund provide you much greater flexibility hmm. so you have 2044 maturity maturity gsec fund available in the market currently ah, okay there is one yeah, such yeah. fund available so this is being offered by nippon so nippon Lakshya Nivesh is the one fund, which is a fantastic. Uh, uh, as a structure, is a wonderful product, mm-hmm. and seven point four, seven point five percent is the uh, is the YTM. You take off fifty fifty high basis point expenses. Six point nine is the is a net of expenses YTM for twenty five years, which is a wonderful product. Now twenty four years. Uh, beyond that, you have a constant maturity fund, which is ten year constant maturity fund. Outstanding track record over the last ten twelve years, even in this. very challenging uh, period you have a shorter duration gsec fund short term which have a 3 years 4 year 5 year maturity hmm. so it depend on what you want to do and my own research suggest me that 90% of the time a gsec fund on the gross basis outperform bank fd on net basis net of taxes they outperform on all point of 5 year plus rolling return so if somebody even investing for 5 year 
I have a State Bank of India, FD or SDFC Bank, FD, and I have a GSEC security. I suppose five-year SBI FD is below 6%, around 6%. You have five-year GSEC, which is around 6% plus. You get the coupon in bank deposit, which is taxed. In mutual fund, that coupon is not get taxed. You wait for three or five years period. You convert into long-term capital gain, apply indexation benefit. The tax incidence is much lower. And also your flexibility, suppose in that year you have a long-term capital loss, you can adjust the long-term capital gain. So mutual fund provide far, far greater flexibility in constructing the customer's portfolio. But unfortunately, these products are not reaching out to the customer because sales force on insurance side is much more motivated than on mutual fund side. <laughs> okay. Um, well, point well taken. Um, then, the, then the last question out here on this, uh, at least this piece would be, Vijay, that uh, would these uh, returns be as uh, dependable as what the insurance companies say that they are giving fixed returns? I mean, the GSEC returns would largely be not into question under any stretch of imagination any which way. So suppose you are buying a GSEC fund, you are buying government of media securities. And if you question on that, then it means then that you can the question questioning, anything else. then you can question bankers as well. Hmm. And from where the insurance companies are going to generate return? They are going to generate return from investing in underlying market only. Yeah. But they provide guarantee. And there's a huge cost of guarantee. Why should you pay for that? Okay. Fair point. So there are options available, viewers. Uh, if you are indeed going out and investing into retirement benefit funds in an insurance company, just look through the other options available. If you don't have that time or can't understand, please watch this show again and try and understand what are the options available. Then maybe contact a financial advisor who might be able to actually give you the right investment advice when it comes to investing in uh, policies which could give you returns. Uh, Vijay, I just have one small follow-up and that is off topic now. We're moving on. Just one quick follow-up. Uh, as we are starting the year, almost everybody seems to be suggesting that this could be the year of the return of mid-caps and small-caps vis-a-vis -vis the large-caps. Now, I do not know if that will happen. A lot of people have gone wrong in 2019. We are not in the business of predicting whether that will happen or not. But let's assume that there are some viewers out there who are convinced that that is what will happen. And they want to buy into a mid-cap or a small-cap fund, essentially a non-large-cap fund and non-multi-cap fund. What are the options available and why would you recommend or not recommend these funds? So uh, we also uh, tend to believe that uh, the mid and small-cap should do well in 2020. There's no guarantee. We took this call in the mid of 2019 and it worked, but it's not necessarily going to work. But our call is a large-cap, you're not going to make big money. So in the mid-cap, we have a recommendation list. So we, uh, for us, the top recommended list on mid-cap size, DSP mid-cap fund, uh, Invesco mid-cap fund, uh, the Kotak Emerging uh, Blue Chip Fund, and Mirai mid-cap fund. These are the four funds we have on the mid-cap side. On the small-cap side, we have uh, ICICI small-cap fund, uh, Axis a small-cap fund, Edelweiss a small-cap small fund. So you can pick, choose, make your own portfolio. But it's very important that in these funds, you don't uh, do investment at one go. Mm -hmm. Even if you have a large sum of money, please put that money into liquid fund or equity arbitrage fund. And you should transfer that money over a minimum 12-month period. Because averaging uh, is much better uh, when you do a systematic ways on a, on a, on a fixed uh, frequency. So if you want to participate in the mid and a small cap, please keep that in mind. And second, be ready for volatility. Sure. Uh, return is but after crossing the volatility. Most important thing, my big call again I'm telling you, suppose you're investing for 10, 15, 20 years, equity is a definitely one product, but also look at doing SIP in a debt product. Debt product SIP over the last 10, 15, 20 years has consistently outperformed gold return and in some cases even outperform equity performance. But that is only in case of uh, if you want asset allocation because I remember some time back you had come on the show when you had mentioned that if you have a really long term period in mind then equities naturally have outperformed by and large. Absolutely. There's no question about it. So I'm saying equity is one part. But uh, what happens that when the people say uh, uh, negative return in the portfolio the conviction goes out of the window. Okay. And then they're searching for insurance. Okay. And, and, and these funds, just one last question, Vijay. These funds that you mentioned at the mid-cap and the small cap end of the market, are these the set of funds that you are, in, you are recommending people buy into three or funds and four funds in each category and not necessarily limit themselves to one yeah, fund? Actually, when you're doing large cap, you can do in a couple of funds because large cap invests in top 100 ideas. So uh, the return could converge over a period of time. 
But in mid and small cap, I think is important. You should look at least three, four fund in each category. So you should look at uh, the uh, three to four fund and do uh, SIP or STP uh, structure. And please review your portfolio regularly. Also need to keep in mind in a small and mid cap fund, the moment your CAGR crosses 15% plus, time to exit, whatever people are saying, time to start taking some money out of the table. No mutual fund advisor say take money out of table, but I'm telling you should take money out of the table. So you should do that, yes. Okay. Great. Vijay, thanks so much. Uh, it's a pleasure talking to you as always, but thanks so much for taking the time out and uh, best wishes for a happy 2020. Same to you and your viewers as well. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Vijay. And viewers, uh, thanks for tuning in to this leg of the Mutual Fund Show. And I repeat, have a fantastic new year.